All right, hi, uh, I'm Emily Steven. I'm a uh, statistical neuroscientist in the math and stats department. Um, okay, so neuroscience to data science and back. I wanna talk about the and back side of things. And in particular, kind of bringing insights from data science back to classical statistical modeling in neuroscience. And um, I've been really excited about how data science has kind of changed the way neuroscientists talk about neural activity. Because a lot of the insights from data science and artificial neural networks come from describing low dimensional manifolds that can parsimoniously capture our high dimensional neural activity. Um, and so what's happened is it's actually altered our standards for what constitutes an explanation in uh, neuroscience research to, just, to include descriptions in latent space. All right, so um, that's great, but unfortunately, a lot, of the, a lot of times these artificial neural networks are extremely flexible, um, they're often unsupervised, and that can make it difficult to work with them in low, no uh, sorry, low data or high noise scenarios, which is often what we're working with in neuroscience research. So um, classical models can overcome that by incorporating understanding of the task or the data, building in a supervised model, and gaining statistical power. Okay, so I want to talk about updating classical statistical models to use what they do well, but gaining explanatory power from the language of latent geometry. And I'm going to explain how we do that in a specific case, which is speech perception. So here, um, the task is natural speech perception, where uh, the person is listening to a sentence, a bullet she answered. Here is the stimulus in the time domain and the frequency domain. And the person who's listening to this is a patient who's undergoing electrocorticography, ECOG recordings, which are implanted or are placed on the surface of cortex. And this is extremely rare data. Usually we only have maybe six minutes to work with the patient, maybe as much as 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, and so this is not a big data situation, but we still wanna be able to leverage some of those tools and insights from, um, from data science and from in particular latent, uh, latent geometry and latent dynamics analysis. All right, so we're also interested in the superior temporal gyrus, which is here, which is involved in speech perception. And in particular, it's known to encode low level features like phonemes, right? So consonants, vowels, plosives, things like that. And we don't know how those phonemes are put together into higher order auditory objects like words. So this is what's called a dynamic binding problem. How you put these individual features and say, these features correspond to this word, these features correspond to this other word. And uh, so we're gonna try to update our model to try to get at questions related to that. Okay, classically, you would use standard regression. Um, show me that, okay. So here's, here's our standard regression model where we have event times here on the left. And on the right, I'm showing the model where our high dimensional time series, neural time series is represented as a sum of responses to individual features. So each coefficient matrix here is the response um, to a feature for all electrodes and delays. And classically, we would just fit this using ordinary least squares or ridge regression. Okay, what that will give us is uh, each feature will have a matrix like this, where each row shows a single electrode's response to that feature. This is a peak rate feature, which you don't have to worry about the definition of that too much. And the insight that we're gonna, or the trick that we're gonna use here is to assume that this is a low rank matrix. So it can be represented as a pattern of electrodes and pattern, patterns across electrodes and patterns across time, much like in a PCA. And we can build that low rank assumption into our regression using what's called uh, a nuclear norm penalty, a group nuclear norm penalty, which will cause the matrix to be sparse in its singular values. If you know about um, lasso or L1 regression, this is like that, only it's doing it on the singular values, which encourages this matrix to be low rank instead of uh, sparse in its elements. All right, so what this will do is it'll uh, fit each feature using a small number of patterns across electrodes and patterns across time. Um, and the number of patterns for each feature are um, learned by the model. So the features will compete with each other based on how well they can capture the ECOG signals. All right, 
So what this is going to do is allow us to discover feature specific subspaces in the um, high dimensional neural activity that might tell us something about the task of speech perception. And in particular, I'm showing you latent dynamics related to that peak rate feature that we think are actually playing an important role in the temporal binding problem that I mentioned before. And so um, if you're interested in that, I would encourage you to take a look at this paper uh, currently on BioArchive, but soon to come out in hearing research. And um, just to, to bring it back out, it's, uh, I just wanted to make the point that it's not only the nonlinear or big data models that are changing how neuroscience is done. Data science is also changing about, is changing how we think about information processing and what explanatory frameworks we're willing to consider when it comes to um, neuroscience research. So uh, we're using those insights back in the context of classic statistical models. That's all I have for today.